welcome to module 5 on stability of slopes lecture number 4 uh, in the course on advanced geotechnical engineering. So in the previous lecture we actually have discussed about the uh, number of methods of uh, stability analysis of slopes and along with uh, some solid examples. In this lecture we will try to introduce ourselves uh, how to introduce uh, a critical failure surface through some conventional methods as well as some uh, numerical methods as well as by using uh, some renowned uh, softwares. In addition to that we will try to look into a special condition called rapid drawdown condition. This will occur after a dam or reservoir uh, when it is uh, established with the steady state seepage conditions when there is a change in the water levels outside the slope then these conditions can be trivial as far as the reservoir or dam slope stability is concerned. So this is the lecture number 4 uh, in module 5 on stability of slopes and uh, this particular uh, uh, topic for this uh, lecture we will be discussing in length about the uh, rapid uh, drawdown condition or sudden drawdown condition. In addition we will try to see what is the effect of uh, rainfall on a stability of a slope if there is a uh, you know a consistent intensity of rainfall with long duration or with increasing intensity of rainfall for a given duration and uh, how this can vary uh, or can affect the stability of slope if the slope inclination changes. Before discussing this rapid drawdown condition let us look into the uh, uh, determination of the most critical slip surface. Most critical slip surface implies that which the, sur the slip surface which whichever the surface which actually gives the minimum factor of safety. The criteria, criteria for selecting the most critical surface is that the surface which actually gives the uh, minimum factor of safety and which can be the potential failure surface. So there are trail and error approaches are involving uh, basically it involves the location of the center of the rotation and uh, radius of the slip surface and distance of intercept of the slip surface from the toe and minimum factor of safety achieved. Generally it is uh, uh, done by if a slope is there with a perpendicular bisector from that within that a grid of centers are selected and among the grid of centers when we have when we select innumerable number of circles with uh, radius r minimum and r maximum like this when we have this grid of centers uh, which are uh, uh, selected or located at the uh, almost at the perpendicular bisector of the slope surface and each uh, grid of center when we when you analyze for number of uh, slip surfaces the one whichever whichever the whichever is the center or grid of center which gives the least factor of safety that is actually treated as the uh, minimum factor of safety. So if that grid the selected grid is uh, inadequate or inappropriate then one needs to uh, reselect the grid such a way that the minimum factor of safety is achieved. Uh, the way back Felnius 1935 proposed uh, empirical approach for the cohesive soils particularly for undrained uh, condition. Uh, for phi u is equal to 0 that is with the soil with uh, Cu uh, that is with undrained cohesion and different uh, slopes like one way uh, one uh, one is to one 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 way uh, one vertical one point five horizontal or one vertical point one uh, point five eight one is to two one is to three and one is to five uh, with uh, uh, alpha that is uh, this angle and uh, uh, psi this angle these are the cosines the direction cosines with that uh, for these are the this beta is the slope inclination. So uh, draw a line through the corners of the uh, slope at angle alpha and psi as per in the table and O1 will be the, the center of the rotation. So this is one of the conventional uh, method. The another conventional method which was actually given by Jumkes uh, that is the possible location of centers for a C dash and phi dash soil wherein here 
uh, when uh, the center of the rotation of the critical uh, circle is assumed to be lie at uh, point P O 1 P O 1 and point P is at a distance H above the uh, H below the toe that is this H below the toe and 4.5 times the height uh, towards the from the toe of the slope. So, when you draw the line wherever it actually meets along this line the one which act this 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 uh, uh, envelope is nothing but the different factor of safety is and this is the one which actually gives the least factor of safety and that is actually selected as the possible uh, you know potential uh, failure surface. But however, some uh, early methods which are actually done through uh, uh, you know softwares like uh, Geo Studio, uh, wherein slope W which actually takes like grid of centers and it also gives uh, the possible tangent lines. So, it sets the circles within this uh, grid of uh, the tangent lines and uh, uh, with the prescribed uh, intercepts with the at the top at the top and then at the near the toe and with the grid of the centers it tries number of circles and the one which actually gives the least factor of safety is evolved as a uh, you know the critical failure surface. And this is actually called as the entry point and this is actually called as the exit point. So, we, we know that whenever uh, there is a soft soil and then there is a tendency that the circle actually draws down towards the base of the slope. Uh, but if there is uh, you know the hard statum then uh, with the if the slope is actually constructed above the uh, ground surface or above the hard statum then the slope uh, fails within the toe or the slope surface. So, this entry, entry and exit option is actually used for uh, circular uh, critical uh, surface slip surfaces and uh, this is actually uh, uh, you know uh, used widely for uh, selecting the potential value surface or potential slip surfaces or slip circles in the uh, LE methods by, by using a uh, this, uh, slope, uh, slope, uh, slope, uh, slope stability softwares. So, Comparison to uh, we, uh, we, when we have uh, let us discuss about if you are having an embankment uh, which is a uh, you know a dam reservoir and water reservoir with uh, impermeable uh, strata at the uh, base and this is the embankment which is constructed with a material having unit weight of 19.64 kilon per meter cube, cohesion is about 4 kilo Pascals and friction angle is about 32 degrees. So, uh, this is actually subjected to uh, you can say water head is there and uh, the slope height is about uh, 6 meters and uh, the slope is uh, uh, one vertical uh, uh, is having uh, one vertical 1.5 horizontal you can see that this horizontal distance is 8 meters vertical height is 6 meters. So, the slope inclination is about one vertical 1.5 horizontal and this is an example after uh, Lambie and Whitman and uh, assume that there is a drainage layer at the base there is a drainage layer at the base. So, this is the filter layer having very high permeability compared to the, the embankment soil. So, let us see that when uh, we do the uh, seepage analysis and uh, when we perform the seepage analysis what we get is this is called the preatic surface and uh, uh, this is the preatic surface as this being the flow line and uh, you can uh, this, this being the equipotential line as this being the equipotential line with the head is equal to 0 here uh, what you see is the, this is the upper uh, most uh, flow line and the soil below this is actually saturated and this uh, this condition is actually once these conditions are prevailing then this is actually said to be subjected to a steady state seepage conditions. So, afterwards uh, this uh, uh, selected the grid of centers are selected as we discussed uh, uh, in the previous uh, slides and uh, from each uh, circle from each center the number of circles are actually have been tried and out of this the one which actually gives the least factor of safety is actually reported here that is uh, nothing but here which is actually having a factor of safety of 1.289. So, when you look into the uh, you know this is actually analysis is done by Bishop's uh, simplified method and we know that uh, where uh, tangential uh, forces along the slices were uh, uh, assumed to be 0 and uh, the forces on the normal to the uh, slice vertical slice surface that is actually considered. So, uh, if you see the uh, free body diagram of the uh, slice 11 that is actually counted from here this is actually shown here and this is uh, when it is uh, projected here 
what you can see is that these are the normal forces which are actually acting on the vertical surface of the slice and this is the base of the slice and this is the self weight of the slice depending upon the so this is uh, this portion is partially saturated and this portion is saturated so this portion this weight of the slice is given and that is indicated here as a uh, force polygon here and this is the normal force this normal force is indicated here and this uh, tangential force which is nothing but the shear stress that is indicated here the difference of these forces acting this side that is this one. So, for example, if you do this analysis by using uh, uh, the say Swedish method of slices, as these forces are assumed to be zero, you will see that uh, the it, there will be a force, uh, the triangle. There will be a polygon will be in the form of a triangle. But here, because of this condition, you will see that there is uh, a net uh, horizontal forces because this is are represented here. Now, when you plot this uh, distance from the toe of the slope. Uh, with uh, the normal stress uh, uh, at the base of the slice, then you can see that uh, the mobilized normal stress at the base of the slice uh, is about 35 kilo Pascals and then uh, which actually drops down when you go away from the toe of the slope. Similarly here the shear stress mobilized uh, uh, is also plotted uh, in the uh, whatever we it has been recorded in from the uh, pro, uh, program. So this is uh, the plot showing the distance from the toe of the slope to the shear stress in the shear stress mobilized along the base of the slice. So the same problem has been analyzed by using plaxis by strength reduction method and with that the factor of safety is actually obtained as 1.29. So what you can see is that the possible failure surface is actually obtained the same periodic surface what actually has been obtained from the C phase analysis has been feeded here in plaxis two dimension analysis and the potential failure surface which is actually obtained is recorded here. So what actually has been obtained from the LE analysis and then from the you know for the example of Lambie and Whitman problem is found to be in agreement. The factor of safety which is actually obtained by using LE analysis is found to be 1.289 and with this method it is found to be about 1.29. So the comparisons of factor of safety with the LEM and FEM is given here. If you perform the ordinary method of slices it is actually given as 1.161 and if you do the Bishop's method it is 1.289 and John Booth's method which is 1.22 and Morgenstern price method with finite equilibrium where 1.306. So what does it imply is that uh, if you look uh, uh, you know the slope with a factor of safety 1.2 if you go with the ordinary method of slices uh, we actually tend to uh, over conservative but uh, if you adopt say Bishop's method or Morgenstern price method it uh, indicates that uh, the slope will be stable up to a factor of safety of 1.3. So uh, you know this is the advantages of uh, you know the, the different methods so the comparison is actually shown here in this particular uh, slide. So here uh, again uh, the slide which was actually shown earlier was actually shown again and this was the Ariel uh, 2003 work wherein uh, the limited group analysis was actually done uh, by using uh, Bishop's method and John Booth's method and uh, Morgenstern price method. And the results were actually found whatever the results which are actually obtained for the Lambe Whitman problem were found to be consistent with the results actually presented by REL 2003. As you can see that 1.758 and then the Morgenstern price method is actually coming around 1.737 and the Plax is actually giving about 1.654. Now in a, this is a particular uh, uh, a slope which is uh, uh, having an inclination of about uh, uh, one vertical uh, one horizontal. Uh, these uh, lines which are actually shown here shows that if you are inducing a seepage uh, from the side of a slope then how the periodic surface will raise to the slope. So you can see here in the fourth day so this is the slope boundary. And in the fourth day, the periodic surface is only this. And as the uh, flow takes place, and as the head is actually raised, you can see that uh, the periodic surface, uh, uh, you know, uh, reaches uh, the climbs up, 
and the pore water pressure for example at this particular point continues to increase. Now what will happen is that if the given slope is actually stable and with this periodic surface conditions or the flow line top flow line condition the slope will be actually subjected to steady state CPS condition and remain safe. But if but in, in the long term what will happen is that the internal erosion is the one thing which actually can occur rapidly. So for that purpose, for to in order to avoid this internal internal erosion and piping problems at the downstream of the slope, there is a need for the uh, you know uh, to take care adequate measures about uh, uh, preventing the internal erosion and piping at the downstream of the slopes. So the reason why this has been actually shown is that the periodic surface which are actually uh, obtained experimentally were actually combined were compared uh, with uh, the one which are actually obtained from the CPS analysis as well as from some experimental works which is carried out at IIT Bombay. So this is for the slope of this comparison is actually for a slope of 63.43 degrees. What you can see is that this is the result of the seepage analysis with the water actually at this level and this is the, the preatic surface which is actually measured from this height to this height and with the CPW. Uh, what actually uh, is uh, obtained is this and uh, uh, from the uh, from the uh, experimental investigation the obtained is this much. So this is actually found to be uh, consistent and wherein what you, what you can see is that uh, both CW and uh, this actually found to be uh, in order. So when, when you with increase in uh, uh, you know u by gamma h. The U by gamma h which is nothing but uh, uh, pore water pressure measured at a certain horizontal distance from the uh, crest of the slope uh, and uh, if you normalize that with a bulk weight of the soil uh, into height of the slope and if you do then you can see that of once this U by gamma h reaches to attains a value of uh, you know 0.5 for a 45 degree slope the slope is actually attaining a value of 1 that means that the slope as the u by gamma h is actually increasing as the uh, preatic surface is traversing and then uh, in contact with the toe of the slope then there is a possibility that uh, the slope instability can be instigated. So uh, before uh, discussing uh, the rapid uh, drawdown conditions uh, let us look into the example uh, 4 for the practice and uh, this in this uh, particular uh, problem a cutting of 9 meter deep is to be excavated in a saturated clay uh, having a unit weight of uh, 19 kilo newton per meter cube. The design shear strength parameters are based are uh, Cu 30 kilo newton per meter square and phi u is equal to 0. A hard stratum underlines the clay at a depth of 11 meter below the ground level. So using the Taylor stability method which we have discussed earlier determine the slope angle at which the uh, failure would occur. And what is the allowable slope angle if a factor of safety 1.2 is specified? That means that you need to determine what is the uh, uh, determine the slope angle at which the failure would occur, and what is the allowable slope angle if a factor of safety of 1.2 is specified. So this uh, is an example for the Taylor stability method which we have discussed. And here a cutting of 9 meter high deep is to be excavated in a saturated clay of uh, unit weight 19 kilo per meter cube. And uh, shear strength parameters are undrained that is Cu is equal to 30 kilo Pascals is given and hard stratum underlies the clay at a depth of 11 meter below the ground level. The another example for the practice example 5 is uh, for the given uh, failure surface which will be shown in the next slide. We need to determine the factor of safety in terms of effective stresses for the slope detailed in figure using the felonious method of slices. The unit weight of the soil is 21 kilo newton per meter cube and the characteristic shear parameters are C dash that is uh, the drained parameters effective cohesion is 80, 8 kilo newton per meter square and effective friction angle is phi dash is equal to 32 degrees. So the slope is actually shown here and uh, wherein uh, the uh, this distance so here this particular portion is the tension crack and uh, the depth of the tension crack actually is given as 1.37 and the horizontal distance from the crest of the slope is about 4.26 meters. So the failure surface uh, is uh, uh, 
assume it to be fitted up to from this point to this point. So this is the entry point because this portion is already cracked. So there cannot be any uh, generation of the uh, you know mobilized shear resistance. So what we do is that we select from the tip of the crack to the say toe of the slope in this case and uh, this is the center of the rotation and this is the horizontal distance uh, from this point to uh, this point and uh, this is the, this height is 19.2 meters uh, and this is 12 meters height and this horizontal distance is given as 24.8 and these are the, uh, the equipotential lines and these are the uh, uh, flow line which is actually given here like this. So for this condition the scale is actually given here and this is after Craig 2004 and uh, this uh, by using this uh, the failure surface for the condition which is actually shown the um, this particular example 5 need to be solved. So now the coming to the, the rapid drawdown condition the topic for uh, this particular lecture wherein uh, uh, we uh, before uh, addressing that one let us look into the a steady state CPS condition uh, once the reservoir or a dam which is actually has been full for uh, some time the condition of the steady state uh, seepage becomes established through the dam with uh, the soil below the top flow line in the fully statured state. The, so uh, the soil below the top flow line nothing but the periodic surface is uh, com will be completely saturated. The condition must be analyzed uh, in terms of effective stresses with the value of pore water pressure being determined from the flow net. And the values of uh, RU that is the pore water pressure coefficient which is nothing but the ratio of uh, U by gamma H uh, gamma sat H uh, is uh, nothing but is up to 0.45 are possible uh, in case of homogeneous dams. Uh, but much lower values can be achieved in, uh, uh, if uh, in dams having internal drainage that means that if you are having uh, dams with internal drainage that is like filters or chimney drains as the periodic surface will be subjected to uh, a dip and because of that the RU value uh, can be much lower. Uh, the factor safety for this condition should be at least 1.5 but one thing uh, one has to be established is that uh, there can be eventuality of the occurrence of the internal erosion problem. So uh, this need to be addressed. So after the reservoir or dam which has been full for some uh, time the condition of steady seepage becomes established through the dam with the soil below the top flow line is actually completely saturated and effective stresses conditions need to be considered. So this so in the rapid drawdown condition suppose any change in a once you once you know steady seepage conditions are established because of certain constant water level a drawdown of the reservoir level will result in a change in the pore water pressure distribution within the slope and uh, this actually depends upon the, the rate at which this uh, drawdown is actually taking place and also the permeability or coefficient of permeability of the soil. So after a condition of steady seepage condition has become established a drawdown of the reservoir level uh, or the water level in the dam will result in a change in the pore water pressure distribution. So if the pore permeability of the soil is low a drawdown period measured in weeks may be rapid in relation to even uh, if you are having permeability of soil is low drawdown period which is actually measured in weeks may be rapid can be treated as a rapid in relation to dissipation time and change in pore water pressure can be assumed to take place under undrained conditions. The pore water pressure changes can actually take place in undrained conditions. So in this uh, particular uh, slide a slope stability analysis uh, in drawdown condition or a response of a slope to the drawdown condition is shown. So here the, uh, this particular uh, first figure actually shows the pore water pressure under hydrostatic under uh, high water level that means that uh, this is the initial uh, equilibrium condition wherein uh, the pore water pressure is under hydrostatic conditions. Here uh, with a drawdown which actually has taken place the water level which actually from here to here it has dropped at a certain rate uh, but before the any consolidation settlements or consolidation adjustments that u the pore water pressure at this point is initial u what is the whatever is the hydrostatic water condition plus delta u from the change in the water load against the surface of the slope. So this is actually nothing but there is an increase that is nothing but initial u plus the delta u. So in, in at this particular stage uh, with an increase in the pore water pressure uh, within the slope there can be a danger for the uh, 
uh, slope uh, stability. That means that uh, the factor of safety of a slope uh, can uh, you know will be will will reduce to uh, a certain value. So uh, after uh, once it is uh, subjected to consolidation adjustments and that uh, pore water pressure obt obtained from the transient flow net is actually shown here. And uh, once the uh, equilibrium is existed and uh, with the low water levels the pore water pressure is actually uh, established to these things. So when these things uh, happen under a cyclic manner with uh, increasing water level and then decreasing water level. So there can be a possibility of uh, it can uh, get hampered with the uh, factor of safety. So uh, in this particular uh, slide let us consider the analysis which is actually pertaining to uh, rapid uh, drawdown condition. So here uh, consider a slope which is uh, after the uh, Bishop and uh, Jerome 1960 uh, which is uh, a particular uh, dam or a reservoir and this is the water level in steady state condition and uh, uh, this, this particular uh, this is the potential uh, failure surface and uh, this was the initial uh, hydrostatic uh, this is the water level and uh, this can be a, a uh, periodic surface after a certain uh, drawdown. So at point P the pore water pressure uh, before drawdown at point P on a potential failure surface is given as. So which is uh, nothing but uh, U naught uh, which is nothing but the pore water pressure at this point gamma W H that is uh, this water level plus H W so, so we are actually at this point. But this H dash which is actually loss which actually has taken place because of the the drawdown which actually has taken place from uh, from this level to that. So the H dash is nothing but the loss of the head because of the seepage. So U naught is equal to gamma W into H plus H W minus H dash. Now it is actually easier assumed that change in uh, total uh, major principal stress uh, that is due to the resulting due to the uh, soil uh, slope is equal to total or partial removal of water uh, above the slope. That means that the any change the net change in the total stress that is nothing but a sig major principal stress nothing but the sigma 1 that delta sigma 1 is equal to uh, gamma w h w that the gamma w h w uh, which is uh, nothing but minus gamma w h w. At the end of the change in uh, water pressure uh, what will happen is that this uh, delta u uh, which is actually minus b dash delta sigma dash. So which is uh, written as minus b dash gamma w h w. So this uh, uh, for uh, delta sigma 1 is equal to delta u. So for this once, once you when, when you substitute here and uh, when you write u is equal to u naught plus delta u then delta u uh, when we substitute for b dash gamma w h w which is minus and u naught is uh, substituted uh, which is nothing but gamma w h into plus h w minus h dash when you write here then we get uh, u is equal to uh, pore water pressure at point P immediately after the rapid drawdown once it is actually then gamma w into h plus h w into 1 minus b dash minus h dash. So uh, you by using uh, the pore water pressure ratio uh, that is uh, gamma w is equal to u by gamma sat h. Now substituting uh, for uh, u here uh, this particular expression which is gamma w into h plus h w into 1 minus b dash minus h dash. So um, this, uh, uh, this uh, u it uh, that gamma u now r u will be gamma w, gamma w by gamma sat uh, into 1 plus h w h by into 1 minus b dash minus h dash by h. So for a decrease in total stress the value of b which is nothing but b bar is slightly greater than 1. An upper bound value of the R u can be obtained uh, by assuming b is equal to b dash is equal to 1 and neglecting uh, uh, neglecting uh, h dash. So neglecting h dash it is not h naught it is h dash. So with the neglecting h dash this will be 0 and with the, this will be 1. So uh, the upper value is nothing but gamma u by gamma w by gamma set. Uh, the ratio of gamma w by gamma set is approximately equal to 0.5. So the upper value will be upper bound will be uh, basically about close to 0.5. So typical values of RU immediately after the drawdown within the range of uh, 0.3 to 0.4 uh, 
a minimum factor of safety of 1.2 may be acceptable uh, after rapid drawdown condition. So, when we are actually investigating we, we have to ensure that a minimum factor of safety of 1.2 is ensured. So, the pore water pressure distribution after drawdown in soils of high permeability decreases as the pore water drains out of the soil above the drain drawdown level. So, one inference is that the pore water pressure distribution after drawdown in soils having high permeability decreases as the pore water drains out of the soil. The saturation line moves downward at a rate depending upon the permeability of soil. Uh, a series, uh, the rate at which the saturation line or the periodic surface or top flow line moves that depends upon the, the type of the soil or a soil actually having a, a particular permeability that, that means that it depends upon the type permeability of the soil. So, a, based on this a series of flow nets can be drawn for different positions of saturation line and vary and values of pore water pressure can be obtained. The factor of safety can thus be determined using an effective stress method for any position of saturation line. So, uh, as the uh, slope uh, the condition is actually coming close to the before coming close to the uh, equilibrium condition or just uh, after the rapid drawdown we can determine and once the slope actually reaches to some equilibrium condition we can determine. So, the vulnerability is that you know once actually immediately after drawdown condition the factor of safety. Uh, reduces. So, for that condition we need to ensure that uh, it is actually having any adequate uh, factor of safety. So, the in this uh, particular uh, slide a typical flow net uh, uh, with a particular uh, saturation line for a particular drawdown. So, here the drawdown actually happened from here to here and this is the core which is actually with the low permeable soil and this is uh, a relatively permeable soil and this is the flow net uh, in the case of a drawdown. Uh, so, this is the uh, top flow line for a particular uh, state this is the top flow line. So, you can see that uh, for, uh, uh, this is the top flow line this is the top flow line. So, you can see that uh, these are the these are the flow lines which are actually these are the flow channels flow channels and these are the equipotentials this is the impervious surface. So, it is assumed that uh, the water actually will not penetrate through this and this is the impervious stratum. So, the typical flow net in the case of a drawdown condition is given. So, for this uh, particular uh, uh, flow line and uh, flow net condition we were able to do the stability analysis and then we, we have to see that for this uh, drawdown with particular this thing what will be the factor of safety by using the effective stress analysis parameters with uh, C dash and phi dash can be determined. And the pore water pressure ratio can be used uh, for stability analysis as explained by um, uh, Bishop and Morgenstern 1960. This method is based on the effective stress analysis it involves the following parameters slope inclination, depth factor that is nothing but the uh, soil below the stratum that is D um, slope height and uh, the ratio depth factor is nothing but uh, soil below the uh, toe that is the height is uh, if it is if that height is say D and the slope height is H that is the ratio of this D by H and angle of hearing resistance that is friction angle phi dash and non dimensional parameter which is nothing but C dash by gamma H and H is the height of slope and pore water pressure ratio. So, factor of safety can be computed using the charts provided by this thing, but these are not covered in this particular lecture. So, but however, what has been done is that a typical slope which is actually after Berlin in 2007 was actually considered and here the seepage and stability analysis for drawdown conditions were calculated. And by using Geo Studio 2012. So, the schematic diagram of the slope which is actually shown here, and the drawdown rate is which is two drawdown rates are considered one is actually rapid drawdown, and other one is slow drawdown. The rapid drawdown, which is actually 1 meter per day, so the 1 meter level that is nothing but D falls down with time. So, within a day 1 meter in a day the other one is that slow drawdown the submerged slope of height 7 meters. So, initially the water level is up till here and the slope is actually having soil parameters which will be disclosed and one vertical 3 horizontal is the slope inclination and 7 meter is the height of the slope. So, the flow chart which actually involves this thing is that first study state seepage analysis. 
and constant hydraulic boundaries uh, total head and transient slippage analysis and the stability analysis consideration of driving forces for failure body forces and uh, pore water pressure so the properties which are actually considered are unit weight uh, for the slope is 20 kilo per meter cube and the coefficient of permeability is uh, 10 to the power of minus 6 and 10 to the power of minus 8 meter per second and the cohesion is about uh, 10 kilo pascals and internal friction angle is 10, 20 degrees. So this is uh, drained parameters cohesion 20, 10 kilo pascals and uh, internal friction angle 20 degrees. So this is the steady state seepage condition analysis using uh, CPW. So uh, at the steady state seepage condition this is the uh, you know the uh, pore pressure conduits and uh, the flow path during the drawdown phenomenon you can see that when the drawdown is actually occurring how the uh, flow vectors actually uh, you know culminating here that can be seen here. Now here with a drawdown rate of uh, 1 meter per day and uh, with uh, a permeability of 10 to the power of minus 6 uh, meter per second what uh, can be seen here the pore water pressure from here the periodic surface from here depleted to this particular uh, level and uh, uh, the variation of the pore water pressure uh, at point P1 if it is plotted you can see that the pore water pressure uh, dissipation with the time can be seen here. So the pore water pressure actually dissipates with the time so uh, that it can be uh, seen from uh, this particular slide. So the stability analysis by using the slope value for that problem for that case where critical factor of safety is equal to 1.4497. So you can see that as uh, with uh, 10 to k with 10 to the power of minus 6 meter per second with 1 meter per day is the drawdown rate that is the the, uh, the depth the water depletion uh, is nothing but a drawdown rate is nothing but a uh, height to the height of water uh, per unit time. So the critical factor of safety obtained is about 1.497. So you can see that the initially the factor of safety is high. But as the uh, drawdown actually taking place you can see that the factor of safety depletes and then remains constant and increases slowly. So uh, this particular uh, condition uh, you know here in this case for this uh, condition we actually have got a factor of safety of 1.497. Now when you have actually got uh, slow uh, drawdown so both uh, you know what will actually happen is that uh, here this R1 is 1 meter per day and R2 which is 0.1 meter per day. So you can see that at the end of the drawdown there is a depletion of the uh, periodic surface takes place. So this is because uh, uh, you know the dissipation of the pore water pressure takes place uh, simultaneously uh, when the drawdown is actually happening. So if you plot uh, the variation of the pore water pressures uh, uh, with time at uh, this particular point what we selected here and uh, these points when you compare so you can see that with uh, uh, slow drawdown there will be high dissipation of pore water pressure takes place with a rapid drawdown there is a very less dissipation of pore water pressure takes place. This implies that uh, with uh, high uh, pore water pressures in the soil there can be uh, you know uh, factor of safety can be affected and uh, low factor of safety can be uh, obtained. So the same thing is actually presented here. Uh, when we have the uh, variation of factor of safety with the seepage time and we here uh, with a drawdown rate of uh, 1 meter per day and 0.1 meter per day the one which actually with a rapid drawdown of 1 meter per day uh, you know uh, uh, gives very low factor of safety uh, or compared to the one with actually higher uh, with uh, relatively slow drawdown. So uh, what it implies that you know the when the drawdown rate is high and uh, because of the high pore water pressure development uh, the factor safety of a slope uh, can be endangered. So here higher factor safety due to dissipation of pore water pressure can be seen uh, with the distribution with uh, minimum factor safety with the time in days which is actually plotted here. So this for, for, a, for, a, for, a, for, a, for a for example let us say second or third day the factor safety is 2 here but uh, the same slope with uh, slow drawdown the factor of safety ensued is about 3.5 or so that is what actually is actually explained here in this slide. Now what will happen when the drawdown rate is same but the permeability is actually of soil is low. So if you see that if the permeability of the soil is low 
then there is a possibility that uh, the pore water pressure dissipation or the depletion of the phreatic surface is marginal for soils with uh, uh, low k values. So depletion of phreatic surface is marginal for soils with low k values. So here you can see that this is a soil with 10 to the power of minus 6 meter per second and this is a, this analysis is actually carried out with a soil with 10 to the power of minus 8 meter per second. So what you can see is that this and this uh, the drawdown rate is same but permeability is actually here 1 by 100 times which is actually uh, less. So you can see the magnified version of uh, uh, the insect which is actually shown here. So this is the uh, depleted uh, uh, phreatic surface. So the depletion of phreatic surfaces is marginal for, uh, for soils with, uh, with low permeability. The same uh, issue is actually shown here the pore water pressure distribution at uh, particular point P1 and uh, with uh, two uh, uh, soils having uh, two different permeabilities 10 to the power of minus 6 and 10 to the power of minus 8 meter per second the dissipation of pore water pressure is less for soils with low permeabilities. And similarly the factor of safety is if you look into this higher factor of uh, uh, having a higher factor of safety for the soils having uh, uh, having a high coefficient of permeability. So that means uh, the soil with uh, relatively uh, uh, the because of the uh, because of the uh, uh, because of the uh, you can see that because of the dissipation of the pore water pressure with uh, this thing there is a possibility that high factor safety is obtained but soils with the low permeability uh, the factor safety is uh, low that is actually which is shown here and you can see that the, this particular case reaches to the critical factor of safety which is equal to 1 here. So here this particular value where it can actually if this situation prevails at the site there is a possibility that uh, this uh, slope uh, can undergo failure due to drawdown condition with a 1 meter per day condition. So uh, that, that was actually the discussion about the rapid drawdown condition. And uh, so we in this particular uh, uh, in the forthcoming two slides we discuss about the total stress analysis and effective stress analysis uh, requirements and some general comments we actually have discussed the, uh, the requirement is that the total stress in the soil mass and uh, uh, which is actually common in both the methods but the strength of the soil when subjected to changes in total stress similar uh, to uh, similar to the stress changes in the field. The accuracy is doubtful since the strength depends upon the induced pore pressures. And in the effective stress analysis, here also we require total stresses in soil mass and common in both the methods that is, both the methods in the sense that effective stress and total stress analysis. The strength parameters are in relation with the effective stress and considerable accuracy since there is a insensitivity of the test condition. And determination of changes in external loads accuracy depends upon the measurement of the pore water pressure in this case. So uh, after uh, having discussed about uh, uh, this particular uh, issue of rapid round and condition and uh, method. So what will happen when the slopes particularly the slopes can be as we discussed they can be natural slopes or can be man made slopes or they can be uh, you know some. Uh, uh, conventional uh, retaining walls or when they are subjected to say rainfall storms what will happen. So the rainfall intensities actually vary from uh, the measured in a uh, so many millimeters per day uh, or per hour and uh, if the rainfall intensity with, uh, uh, with certain uh, intensity and is actually subjected to uh, certain duration what will happen to the stability of a slope. So this particular uh, discussion is actually uh, we try to uh, present to you uh, with the analysis uh, by you performed through uh, CBW. So the CBW is a, uh, a, um, a program uh, we, uh, which actually a finite element based program uh, in the Geo Studio 2012 which allows uh, the simulation of a rainfall of different intensity, intensities, intensities with, uh, with uh, different durations uh, numerically. So the slope instability is basically a common problem uh, in many parts of the world causes uh, you know the number of casualties and uh, several infrastructural damages each year. And uh, the rainfall basically what will happen is that uh, at the onset of the rainfall the suction which is the negative pore water pressure uh, increases and changes into pore water pressure 
and the, that results in uh, you know lead to the loss of uh, cohesion and that makes the slopes uh, to fail. So rainfall has been uh, identified as a major cause for the triggering landslides and slope failure. The mechanism leading to the slope failure is that pore water pressure starts increasing when water infiltrates into the unsaturated soil. In unsaturated soil uh, where the predominantly the uh, suction uh, prevails and that gets uh, nullified. The problem becomes severe if the fill material has low permeability and cannot uh, dissipate the pore water pressure generated due to rainfall. So if the pore water, if the pore water pressure uh, generated cannot be dissipated and that uh, can lead to as we have seen in previous uh, analysis can lead to the low factor safeties. To investigate this uh, effect of rainfall and uh, slope stability uh, a, limit a limit equilibrium analysis was carried out by using uh, slope w a product of uh, GeoStudio 2012 software. Uh, the two slope configurations were considered here one is one vertical one horizontal other one purposefully a steep slope inclination of two vertical one horizontal that is 63 degrees slope inclination with horizontal was selected and uh, were subjected to rainfall of various intensities like intensity uh, ranging from uh, 2 mm per hour to 80 mm per hour. 80 mm per hour is very high intensity and uh, the duration of the rainfall for each intensity is about 24 hours that is one day. The periodic surface were fed into the slope W and the stability analysis were performed for, uh, at the onset of rainfall and during rainfall and up to 24 hours of the rainfall. So basically this intention is to bring out uh, uh, the effect of rainfall uh, with uh, rainfall intensity and its duration on the stability of a slope. So here in this uh, particular uh, slide a slope configuration is actually shown here uh, wherein uh, we have uh, uh, the horizontal uh, the this particular uh, lines which are actually shown here this is this is nothing but applied uh, rainfall intensity and this is the initial water table uh, position which is actually assumed that means that initially the static water table which is actually assumed there and then above that it is assumed that uh, uh, that means that the portion here is assumed to be saturated and then here this particular portion is unsaturated and wherein uh, uh, after giving the adequate uh, appropriate soil parameters uh, to this uh, and this analysis is carried out. And uh, the parameters which are actually uh, considered in the slope W are like this. Uh, cap, uh, computed by Bishop's modified method of slices and cohesion is about 3.5 kilo Pascals and phi is about 31.5 degrees. So here in this particular uh, slide it can be seen here effect of rainfall intensity and slope stability. So here uh, with factor safety is plotted on the uh, y axis and time in uh, hours on x axis and it can be seen here this is the, uh, the threshold factor safety or 1 is actually marked here. But uh, with uh, uh, for a slope intense uh, slope uh, the uh, duration of this is actually up till here uh, you know the rainfall is actually uh, you know rainfall is actually allowed that means that the duration of the rainfall is from here to here. So you can see that um, for a uh, rainfall intensity of uh, 2 mm per hour on that particular slope having certain configuration you can see that the factor safety decreased from 1.8 to 1 1.6. But the same slope with the increase in the rainfall intensity you can say that let us say that at 36 per mm per hour you can say that the factor of safety uh, at the beginning of the rainfall is say 1.8 and uh, at, uh, at the end of the rainfall it is actually reduced to about 1.15 or so that indicates that the criticality of the slope and uh, for a slope with a subjected to a rainfall intensity for 80 mm per hour for 24 hours uh, duration as can be seen here and the factor safety touches to 1 that means that uh, the slope actually can uh, uh, be subjected to failure on the wedge of uh, once it is subjected to a particular uh, rainfall intensity for the particular duration. So uh, this shows the uh, slope stability reduces with increase in intensity of rainfall. So uh, these are actually very much uh, important particularly uh, if you are having uh, and but once we uh, after the rainfall let us assume that here what you can say that uh, once a rainfall is actually is uh, elapsed then you know you can see that there is an increase in uh, factor of safety that because there is a dissipation of pore water pressure is taking place. But uh, what will happen with uh, the slopes which are actually constructed with uh, low permeable soils 
and uh, the dissipation when it is actually not happening. Uh, so, the decrease also will not take place rapidly, but even if the decrease actually take place, but uh, the increase in factor safety will not result rapidly. So, that actually uh, determines the vulnerability of a slope to uh, fail. So, this particular uh, analysis which is actually uh, demonstrated for a particular slope inclination of 45 degrees uh, with the increasing rainfall intensity the factor of safety decreases uh, till the uh, period of uh, uh, rainfall duration. Uh, so, in this uh, case a 24 hours rainfall is actually shown. So, with uh, rainfall intensity as high as 80 mm per hour we can see that the factor of safety uh, reaches to limiting factor of safety and uh, subsequently. Um, if the slope uh, survives uh, the factor of safety can increase, but uh, that actually uh, proves to be vital for the uh, slope stability and for ensuring slope stability. Similarly, in this next slide what uh, we are seeing is that uh, the slope inclination of 63 degrees. Suppose if you are having a uh, rainfall intensity uh, on the slope stability uh, for the uh, let us say that in this case uh, uh, we are having say a factor of safety uh, which actually decreases below the limiting value. So, if you are having a slope which is uh, two vertical one horizontal uh, which is a, a steeper slope. So, uh, even with uh, uh, you know a rainfall intensity of about uh, 22 mm per hour uh, within the rainfall duration itself you can see that the slope is actually subjected to uh, failure. That means that you can see here uh, with a low rainfall intensity. Uh, there is uh, not much uh, variation, but what we can what we can see is that once the uh, slope actually um, you know the slope inclination with the 60 degrees is 22 mm per hour, you can see that within 10 hours uh, the slope is actually coming to the limiting factor of safety, and further with uh, 36 and 80 mm per hour, the slope actually reaches in the very very uh, you know short durations of uh, rainfall. So this in, this actually shows that uh, the steeper slopes uh, having uh, uh, have low initial factor of safety and uh, and the effect of rainfall on such slope is uh, more devastating as compared to flat slope that is actually a usual natural conclusion. But uh, basically uh, this exercise is actually done to show that how the rainfall intensity is uh, you know severely can affect the stability of a slope particularly uh, when you are actually having uh, uh, you know increased rainfall intensity even with a slope which is as flat as one vertical one horizontal can be subjected to a failure. But if the slope is actually steeper say nowadays uh, the steeper slopes are common uh, in the urban areas because of uh, you know land availability and uh, you know the land uh, scarcity. So, in such situations uh, one need to actually adopt uh, appropriate uh, strengthening measures for the slopes. And uh, under these all these conditions one has to ensure that uh, the slope uh, uh, stability is actually ensured. So, this uh, leads to our topic wherein uh, uh, you know the uh, measures for the enhancing the stability of a slope and uh, in the forthcoming lectures what we do is that we will try to understand about the seismic stability of the slopes and uh, some uh, introduction or a concept uh, discussion on the reliability reliability analysis of the slopes. So, in this particular lecture we have actually discussed about the especially about the rapid drawdown condition and the second thing is that uh, we also have tried to understand the effect of rainfall intensity on the slope stability particularly with uh, sto uh, with rain with increasing rainfall intensity we have seen that uh, the slope uh, factor safety decreases and with increase in uh, slope inclination is found to be much more uh, devastating.